Thank you for tuning in to the Natty News Daily Podcast. This episode is brought to you in part by our sponsor, Core Nutritionals. You can check out corenutritionals.com for all your supplement needs and use code Natty News Daily at checkout to save 20%. Enjoy the episode. What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of Natty News Daily. We are joined by Canadian Wellness IFBB Pro, Dr. Dove. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. No, no problem. I'm excited to get some some more Canadian blood on the podcast. Yes, I need more <laughs> so, Canadians. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I know James and Dan here aren't going to be overly familiar with what you've accomplished in the sport and probably most of the listeners. So let's uh, let's enlighten them on your journey because it's a pretty cool one. Yeah, so I am... Um... I mean, how far back do you want me to go? So, go go back to because I I know your your past. So go yeah, back like my to whole, like yeah. So, so go, I guess go. the most shocking thing to people when they find out that I am uh, an IFBB pro um, and I turn pro in about eight months from starting to compete uh, is the fact that I'm also a mother of five and I am a mom to triplets as so well. Da- so, so James here on the podcast just uh, he he's yeah. got a. He's got one already, but just had one a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. oh yeah, how's that going for you? <laughs> she has now screamed for like two hours straight. So that's I'm hopping on the podcast, taking a break from that, and uh, we'll go right back to that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I put all my kids in one room. It's like the Leaf game's on. Watch the Leaf game. <laughs> there you go. So uh, they'll be busy for a while, but um, yeah, it's not easy for sure. And, um, and not only remember. mother of five, but had triplets. I had triplets and that was a crazy pregnancy, obviously, as you would expect physically. I I developed a hernia. I had all sorts of issues. I, I was in a wheelchair at the end of my pregnancy. I couldn't move. Um, so the thought of one, losing the baby weight was like, seemed so far-fetched. Like the thought of becoming a professional bodybuilder at that point was like not even like never crossed my mind, you know, but it's interesting how you can kind of start a journey and you just keep leveling up, leveling up, like slowly, slowly, slowly. And before you know it, you're like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> this is like, we did it. And uh, yeah, so I, so I was a mom of, I am a mom of five. And after the triplets it took me about a, a year to really kind of get myself back into shape. I've always been athletic. I grew up doing Taekwondo, which is martial arts and um, fighting competitively. And so I was always an athlete growing up. And I always had these kind of big legs <laughs> from, from doing, you know, a sport that involves a lot of kicking. And, um, and then, yeah, I started training, started doing classes, spin and all this, you know, all these cla- cardio type classes and my physique started changing, but I never really, I never saw the changes that I wanted to see, because obviously, as you know, as coaches, cardio is not going to give you the physique that we all dream of having. Right. So, um, I think with like getting on Instagram and, and learning about resistance training, just through social media and seeing other girls doing it, I kind of met some coaches and tried different things and, uh, started training with an IFBB pro here in Canada and he was competing. So I learned about competing and then the pandemic hit and I needed something online, which at the time he didn't really offer. He was more of a personal trainer. And so I met my current coach and, uh, again, how, had no how did you, on- how did you connect with Ammer? Uh, was, so, was there a mutual or just, you yeah. So I, I, uh, actually didn't know anything about him. Um, I, I wasn't like big on social media. I just like, you know, followed a couple of fitness people. I, I followed one of his athletes at the time. Um, but some, it's so random. So I was in Florida. (laughs) This is like the craziest thing. I was in Florida and I met a girl who happened to be from Toronto and she comes up to me in the gym and I'd been lifting for a few years now. And she asked me, are you a competitor? And I said, no, like, I, like, what, what is that? Like, (laughs) Oh yeah, I think my, my trainer does that. And she's like, oh, like you should be because you know, I'd built some muscle and I always stayed relatively lean. And so she told me about Hammer. And then I also at the same time, like I I didn't contact him then, but then a few weeks later, I went to a juice bar in Toronto of all places, drink (laughs) juice. 
And the owner of the juice bar that I've known for years looked amazing. Like her body just looked so different. And I said, what did you do? And she goes, I met this amazing coach and um, <laughs> his name's Amor. And I was yeah. like, oh, I heard about him in Florida. <laughs> this is so, random. so finally, you know, yeah, COVID hit. And I, I thought back, okay, like maybe I'll call that guy Amor. So I called him and uh, he, he brought me in and I posed for him, which was crazy because he's like a competition coach, you know, like yeah. this is what he does and, and this is what he loves and what he's passionate about. So, um, I think he saw that I had some, some good muscle already, but he also like envisioned what it could be if he for made sure. some tweaks and built me in a different way. And, and we spent a year working together. And then after the year, he's like, you should compete. And then I, again, didn't want to, I always had this, like, I'm also a dentist. So I, I run dental offices. That's so I went to, I did a lot of school and, you know, there's like a bit of a stigma sometimes with competing and what it is, you know, what it might like a little feminist side of me was like, I'm going to go on stage in a bikini and like be judged on like yeah, what sure. I look like, like, isn't that wrong? <laughs> what kind of example am I setting for my daughter for future generations? You know, yeah, I totally. really get it. And, uh, and then I just, I don't know how it happened, but I, I think my, what happened was my husband, I, I was, I kept checking in and I think he was secretly prepping me. Like he was secretly. I was, I was going to say, I feel like I remember you saying that on like yeah. his podcast where like he was, he was in his prepping podcast. you, but you weren't aware of it. Yeah. Or so what like happened that. was I, I said I would do it and I started prepping and at about 12 weeks out, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I'm not going to do, I'm not definitely <laughs> on stage. You know, I have a lot of obviously like my skin from the pregnancy isn't, you know, I'm not 20 anymore. I've, my body's been through a lot. Right. And so yeah. that's always been an insecurity for me. Like I didn't even wear a bikini to the beach. I still don't wear a bikini to the beach. <laughs> like I still have that kind of insecurity, yeah. Yeah. but on stage, it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, sure. a, it's like everybody's in a bikini on stage. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so I dropped, I dropped out of, of prep. I was like, okay, I called him and he was really understanding. He's like, I totally respect that in the back of his mind. He's like, okay, but I'm still going to prep her with it. <laughs> so I just didn't question it. I just kept checking in and like my cardio kept going up and my food kept going down. And I was like, okay, like whatever, we're doing this now. Okay. Like, you know, I just kept going and uh, I guess I'm, you know, a, an ideal client in that sense. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> just went with it. And then, um, I, uh, when I was, when I had started to prep, I spoke to toxic angels who makes, you know, the suits and I designed a suit, but I never ordered it. And then around six weeks when I would have been six weeks out, but didn't realize my husband called them. He's like, you look amazing. And he texted Amher behind my back and was like, <laughs> she looks crazy. She needs to compete. And Amher's like, I know. And so he's like, I'm ordering the suits. And nice. so right this confirmation saying the suit's been ordered, I was like, why did you do that? And then I, the next day at my check, and I was like, by the way, Emma, this is so embarrassing, but Jason ordered a suit for me. And he's like, I know you're six weeks out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I didn't know I was competing until I was six weeks out. And then those six weeks just went by really, really quick. And I did King Kong, which is a regional natural show here. And I ended up winning every class, the overall, and just took yeah. everything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so you would you would have won novice open overall in your first Yeah, all, like everything. I just, it was like, it was the craziest experience. I always say, like, take me back to that day because it yeah. was like walking on stage and getting, like, winning. Like, it was like an automatic. Oh, you know, and it never, like, you can never replicate that ever yeah, again. It's no, like, for sure. Th those, like, those, like, career highs, you can't, yeah, your, your first win, you know, turning pro, winning your first overall, like, you can never replicate that. But feeling. even when I turned pro, there was, like, until finals, there was another girl that I thought was really good, too, and, um, like, in the back of my head, I was still nervous, you know, until the end, but with King Kong, it was, like, in the morning we were like okay like i want the whole thing you yeah know? for sure so that's that's hard that's hard to replicate for sure so and yeah. the week after i did nationals pretty quick and then um, oh yeah that's right that's the year it was back to back yeah it was back to back and and i actually came in second in my class so i did advance but and it was like super you know i like to say this because the girl who ended up winning is really good and i've competed with her um again after but um everybody came up to me and was like, you should have won like coaches, you know, other coaches, coaches commented on my post and were like, what, did, what the hell? And Amber yeah. was like, you know, um, but I was so upset because of that, that I was like, I'm not coming back. And then, oh, wow. uh, 
yeah, I, I, I was like, I thought I was done. And actually Rudy is the one who like, was like, I mean, it's his show, <laughs> but yeah. he was like very much like you need to come back. So, and, and that like for a judge to tell you that it's, a big did you, so, did you get feedback from him as to why you didn't win? Um, I didn't, I think I was so pissed after that show. Like yeah. I was, I went into like a black hole for a while, yeah. you know, I was just like, and then, you know, Amber gave me the talk. Like, <laughs> stop eating your feelings dope <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh again we just went into an office I, I don't think I got feedback but I trust my coach too like I know the judges you know are looking for a certain thing but we always make I think the right improvements just like he yeah. kind of by looking at the winner and so I think the big thing from that nationals to the following nationals when I won my pro card was we brought up my upper body a lot. So I, I really didn't have the shoulders that I needed. And yep. so we really worked on that and my adductors because that's really what makes that wellness physique, you know, or the, from sure. the back pose, you really totally. want to see those adductors filled, filled in. And yep. um, so if you look at like the two comparisons, it's crazy the improvements we were able to make. I ate a lot of food, <laughs> uh, I like tons of like ground beef and eggs and yep. Yep. And see, I'm five foot one. So I kept asking him or like, am I going to die? Like <laughs> so much food. Yeah. <laughs> I've never eaten that much, but seemed to work. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I came back the next year, won my pro card. Yep. Have you competed since then? Yeah. So I, and then again, like back to back, I went and did my pro debut at Ben Weeder and okay. yeah, that did not go as well as I would have liked. I came in seventh and really, with, wow. Yeah, which was not not great, but um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Listen, it wasn't my best presentation. I was like, it was the first time traveling without my kids and my husband. It was, it was kind of stressful. Like, at, yep. you would think that after another month, like my my pro um getting my pro card that physique that was, I think, and I I think Amber would agree, my best physique, um, on stage. And so you would think another month of prep, I would have an even better physique. But I don't think that it, I, well, I know I didn't look as good. And I think it had a lot to do with just like the stress of traveling and yeah. you know, nothing that I purposely did wrong or that Amber did. It was just yep. your body's so sensitive, as you know, at that like every little thing could affect it, cortisol, yeah, sure. that stuff. Sure. Um, and I was very nervous. Like, I think I let the, like, I, I didn't have that time after my pro, my pro card win to like take it all in. And I just wanted to like, like, let's just do it. I'm already lean, <laughs> just yeah. it, you know, and he was already going with another athlete. Right. So, so I jumped on, but I, uh, I think I let the, the, um, I guess nervous the pressure. Yeah. The pressure of a pro debut kind of get to me. Yep. Um, so I wish I could do it again, but it's done. <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to come back and, and try again another year. Yeah. Yeah. Have you toyed around with when that may be? Um, I mean, I might do Ben Weeder again this year. Uh, oh, this okay. next, yeah, maybe we'll see. So I've, I've taken, you know, a pretty decent off season. Yep. Um, and I don't think that shows till November. So, uh, we'll see, but I also do want to take the time to grow being yep. an actual athlete, you know, it's, it's hard. It's harder. Right? Like it's not, sure. I'm not going to grow as quickly as if I was, you know, enhanced and especially in a category like wellness where mm -hmm. the girls are big. Yeah. Like, yeah. You need muscle. Yeah. Like, he, and after Ben Weeder, I wasn't sure if I was going to be done to be honest, because well, like this is another topic. I don't know if you want to talk about, but not all the girls were natural on stage, you know, so, <laughs> you know what we're here now. <laughs> so yeah. let's go for so it. I know that for a fact, I was going to ask your experience at that with yeah, so that I'll, tell, I'll tell you a story and I won't name any names but um one of the girls that came in in the top five actually reached out to a different coach uh who was at the show and and told us this that you know she she wanted to switch coaches and she was taking like nine different drugs or something you know like I um she's not going to be tested in the top five like only the winner gets tested right but it still could have been a spot that I could have had uh and that drives me up the freaking wall. Yeah. Well, and there's all that controversy now. I don't know if you heard yesterday, but we were chatting about another girl that turned pro at my show in bikini that 
who got disqualified. Uh, and one of my teammates could have been a pro, like one of my teammates didn't win. Yep. And it pisses me off too a lot because, you know, especially because it's that girl, not just because she's, you know, a good friend of mine, but also I truly believe she is a pro and she is truly natural. Yep. And um, it's so unfair because she worked her butt off and she's a good athlete and she diets hard and yep. somebody to come in. I mean, I don't know why people do that. And at the end of the day, I honestly, I think it's the coaches that's because a lot of these girls are like sure they should know better but a lot of these girls are like in their 20s you know they're they're yeah they're just doing what they're told yeah like when I was that young I was like so easily influenced especially by you know a successful coach who's telling you I'll make you pro nobody will know you'll test negative you know when they're chasing that influencer dream and (laughs) to be that IFBB pro and um and it's sad and they go with it and I don't know why they don't get fined and CPA doesn't announce it. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of like shoved under the rug and they get away with it. And it's, it's, it's fine. Maybe if like they could go back and like award the pro card to somebody else, once that disqualification happens, like if there was like a second place, yeah, automatically you get it now, but I mean, obviously it wouldn't be the same as getting it on no, stage. No. But yeah. Get, yeah. Getting it later after the fact, is just not, it's not yeah. the same, I know, but like at least it's better than nothing. Like, it is. Oh, know? for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think that like, that's one of the that's one of the biggest holes within the IFBB NPC CPA, right? Is those instances where like I mean, you just that that's supposed to be like our big natural show within the IFBB, like our, our know, opportunity as natural athletes to display ourselves. Like it's all in a in a sense right now, it's our Olympia. And, right. you know, you, you're, you're straight up saying, you know, for a fact, people have squeaked through and it's taking spots away and it's, you know, the integrity of being a natural athlete is just thrown out the window. Right. Right. If they, if they would, if they would really crack down on the testing, it would just legitimize things so much. I, know. Like, I don't know if it's funding or what the, what the, the discrepancy really, is, but it's, it's the it's testing, us. but it's also like they get away with it because they cycle off too, right? Totally. They cycle off at, at the right time. So I don't know if this girl just didn't test at the show. I mean, I was back there because I couldn't pee. <laughs> after <laughs> I, I was like, I don't know why. I like I didn't go to the line. And then Rudy was like, you got to go again. So I'm like, yeah. I'm eating for more. So I was back there for a while. Yeah. And I, yeah. I don't remember if she came in. So I don't know if she just knew she would test negative or test positive and not test. Like, I don't know what happens. Um, obviously they're just trying to say a different story now. I don't know. I don't like, you know, I hate getting involved in politics and this kind of stupid stuff, but like, guys, we have two shows, right? Like, what do we have? We have one show to turn pro and one show to make it to Olympia. Like, Let's if you're going to steroids, <laughs> stay out of our shows. Go now. away. <laughs> you turn pro at a natural show and you were enhanced you're an you asshole cheated. yeah and you cheated yeah. you're a liar so like you're walking around calling yourself a pro but like yep. you should be calling yourself a cheater because like you're yep. not actually a pro because you beat natural athletes like you you know it, mm-hmm. there's no I, th- I think this is really good coming like we talk about this to our blue in the face but from someone yeah coming- as a pro, an IFB pro athlete saying this, like it carries. Of course, it will drive weight, me insane, right? right? Because totally. listen, if I was on staff, I could probably train legs every day or every other day. Like it takes me twice as long to recover. Like this is not like I, nobody talks about drugs, you know, like it's like they, everybody talks about like the pre-workout that they take and the creatine yeah, yeah. They scoop into their protein. Yeah. But like the drugs guys, like yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. Like, you know, you're, um, what is it? Uh, I don't even take it. Maybe I should. Uh, anyways, I forget. But <laughs> they take the recovery now. with a G. It starts with a G. Glutamine. Oh, you know, yeah. like your, your glutamine is not your magic recovery. No, <laughs> or like no. your sleep pills, <laughs> you know? Like, sure. Let's talk about like the real, real thing. So yep. uh, there's no secret that you're taking it. They're performance enhancing drugs. You're enhancing your performance in the gym, which is going to enhance the amount of muscle you put on and the condition and the amount of muscle you maintain when you're cutting. And, and we don't have that. That's why these shows are made for, for athletes that choose. And I have nothing against people who choose to do that. Most of the athletes that I look up to admire, think are incredible in the sport 
are t- are on steroids, you know, yeah. and and I know a lot of them. I'm friends with a lot of them. I respect them. I think they train super hard. Oh, I'm not, yeah. you know, discounting that they don't like they don't work as hard. Like absolutely not. But I do think it gives you an advantage, you know, and and it's it is unfair. Um, you know, the girl that and my friend that ended up not turning pro, like she's she's pissed. You know, that's that's right, very so. upsetting. Yep. Yep. Right. And it's like, we're the, we're the only sport with, with two distinct lanes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you guys play over there. We'll play over here. You don't need to come. Mess and with they have so Sunday. many shows. <laughs> like, yeah. That, that's two, the other part, right? Like, can, it's crazy. You know, one. Especially in the state. It's like where you guys are, like you could turn pro every week, <laughs> you yeah. know, right? Like there's, there's shows everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, to qualify for Olympia, like there's so, like so many shows, but for me, I'm at the point in wellness. Like, I think if I was in bikini, maybe it's a little bit more common for, for girls to do well in pro shows naturally because there isn't as much muscle required. But like these wellness girls, they have really humongous quads and really humongous hamstrings. Like, it's hard to get to naturally, you know? Yeah. Um, I've done really well in my off season, but I definitely don't think I can stand next to one of those girls and look competitive. Right? Well, I don't. Just the the ability to accomplish the end goal of, you know, at the end of the day, we're all trying to build muscle. Right. So when you yeah. are a natural athlete and you have like training food and sleep, that's and it. They've got training food and sleep and some super stuff. Yeah. Different ball game. Super stuff. Yeah. I know. I know. But at this that's point, it. you know, in my, in like, like I was saying, like after Ben Weeder, I was like, what am I going to do from here? Yeah. But, and I built this gym. <laughs> this is my home gym guys yeah, <laughs> whoever's watching yeah. this one on youtube but you know i love training and and to be honest like i was at a show this weekend where i met you and we <laughs> decided to do this together um i literally get jealous i get yeah. jealous when you see <laughs> other girls on stage i'm like gosh i want to do that like i just love i love a show day i love yeah, who doesn't love a show day yeah it's a, I just, it's a party I get it and it's like a whole thing and it's just how else are you going to get that shredded really if you're not stepping on stage like to me that's the ultimate like if i even think of skipping my cardio it's like i will be walking on that stage knowing i skipped cardio <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and yeah you just can't so it's not sure. like it's not like prepping for a vacation or prepping for like a photo shoot where you can you know maybe like photoshop that little bolt yeah like, yeah exactly <laughs> it's not gonna happen on stage so what's your what's your kind of lifestyle like right now training and stuff Um, so, so like I said, I'm a dentist, but I'm, I'm more of an entrepreneur. So I, I run dental offices. Uh, when I got pregnant with the triplets, I couldn't really practice anymore physically. It was really challenging having Mm -hmm. three babies in my stomach, (laughs) um, (laughs) on my back and stuff. So I started getting really into the business side of dentistry and my husband actually works with me. So, uh, he's a lawyer by, like, that's what he went to school for, but he gave that up when, like, when you get pregnant with triplets, it's like, shuffle your life all hands on deck everything Mm -hmm. you know back to the drawing board so uh yeah so we open dental practices together so it is very flexible I work from home 99% of the time I do go into the office here and there when I need to be there Uh, I see patients sometimes but I don't really take on any new patients so so it's actually really great because now I've I've built this home gym when COVID hit and with like how much I love training I this gym literally started with like a bar and some plates. And then yep. I just kept buying things and buying things. Totally. And like a room downstairs into this like commercial looking gym. And we <laughs> actually ended up building this structure over the garage for a gym. So it's super convenient now. Um, so I just train whenever, usually like afternoon, I'll, I'll do some work in the morning and then come in here, train, um, you know, hang out with the kids, pick them up from school. Then I'll do some cardio in the evening. Usually I like to do it or I'll do it early in the morning and yeah, that's it. It's a, uh, it's good. I make it work. I mean, you know, I can't say like people do like ask me all the time, like, how do you do it? You know, five kids and you're a dentist. It's true, but I also don't have like that nine to five job, you know, and I don't work yeah. for somebody I work for myself. And I think that makes a big difference too. I think when for you're sure. working for somebody, you have to go in when you're needed and you have a schedule. It's, I make my own schedule. So when I'm on prep, I can actually take like a ton of time off work completely. If I need, or just like work very little. Yeah. Um, Obviously I'm not gonna lie. Like my office suffers. (laughs) It's when I do that, but 
balance. It's got to do. <laughs> got to do. Mm-hmm. You got to have balance in life, right? So, what about uh, nutrition? Like, are you on like high off season calories right now? Or- yeah, my calories are super high. I'm on like 420 carbs. I my my actually just recently started to drop it because I think like we were getting to the point where I was hitting my <laughs> and I was. I, was, I, I never complained, but I started complaining a little bit. And <laughs> I, 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 there's always something, right? Like on prep, you're hungry and off yeah. season, I'm like, oh, I can't eat anymore. Like this is, a, you know, it's like a job. Yeah, for sure. But I actually mm-hmm. prefer prep. I prefer, I prefer being a little bit hungry than eating when I'm not hungry. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, a, I think a lot of people agree with that, that have competed that like that. Yeah. Constant fullness. And like, you look at food and you're like, I don't want it's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Especially cause I eat the same things. Like I, I always say every off season, I'm going to like, cause when I'm in prep, I'm like, okay, my next off season, I'm not going to be so like anal with the food. I'm going to eat like bagels and I'm going to allow myself like a cookie once a week. Cause I could track it. It's fine. Like we'll, we'll track it. But I'm like, Nope. <laughs> I need to put on quality muscle <laughs> like every, every off season. And then I go back to this, like, neurotic personality of like chicken and rice <laughs> and it's just yeah it gets kind of monotonous but um, are you so are you pretty set meal plan then no so I do macros and I actually do macros in prep as well okay. um, yeah and I keep like certain things in it, it's like it's crazy and Amber knows this and I, like I'll keep chocolate in in my prep till a day out like he took it out on the day of the show he's like don't have it because like we were worried about like the magnesium or like bloating and things like, I don't know. He was just like, it's not necessary, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, for my sanity, I always keep some dark chocolate in and I don't know. I don't think it affected me in any negative way. Just the, the start of prep. It's like a whole Kit Kat. Then it's like two chunks <laughs> no, no. and it's one chunk. Then it's... <laughs> <laughs> I never do Kit Kat, but it's like, it's like a healthy chocolate. Like it's like a, you know, hundred percent. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> it gives me like something, something or some chocolate chips in my oats. <laughs> Talk about your experience working with Amer. Oh, Amer is amazing. I, <laughs> I, um, I didn't really have like a, a coach coach before. Like I said, I had a trainer, um, but I did do like, I did diet for shoots and things like that. And for me, like this style of coaching is just next level. And I said this when, when I went on his podcast that, you know, when we started coaching together, I was like, so confused as to why he wanted me to check in like every three days. And I was like, are you sure? Like why? Like I felt bad because I've always in the past, like felt like people were working for me, but Amor is like, he's the kind of coach that your prep and your, the way you improve, that's like, it's like him, you know, it's like his, he takes it so personally. Yeah, It's like, it's like, we're on this journey together. And so like, he's been amazing. And, you know, obviously, as you know, coaching athletes, there's so many ups and downs in prep and so many times that I've like, just kind of been at my breaking point. And I will text him and say, can you talk? And my phone will ring within seconds. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, Mm -hmm. I think that's, that describes Amber in a nutshell. He's just has one of the best hearts. And so I I think he's that person for a lot of people yeah yeah he means well and it it is really not just physique coaching with him like yeah you know he's like my person you know like my my like he's in my corner he's he's really a coach in every way so I am super super happy with him and uh definitely like never see myself like I you know if I ever stop working with him or like I'm I'm not gonna compete you know it's yeah it's, it's done it's done yeah like I just I'm so used to his style and he's definitely direct and he knows what he wants and you know like check-ins are like (laughs) raise this lower that and I'm like but in my batch do I look okay (laughs) and he's like just do what I said (laughs) you know so so he's you know to the point but caring guy and uh wants the best for all the athletes for sure so yeah yeah sweet with him sweet um so as far as before we close this out so as far as the future for you goes May, yeah, November. Maybe November we'll see, but like I said, you know, I think I'm at a point now with my food and everything like that that I am putting on muscle and you know in my check-ins Amber says, you know, things are growing and going in the right direction. So I uh I want to like, you know, every time you go into a prep, right? You like disturb that cycle. Mm-hmm. And so I want to stay in that 
on that path for as long as I can, but I also love competing and (laughs) there is going to be a time where I'm just like, okay, let's, let's go into prep. So I don't know when that'll be, but, um, that's the one thing with being natural too. And having only like that one show is that like, ideally I would want to prep and do a show and then another show. And then like two weeks later, like three weeks later, another show. And I would have to go into like the open shows, you know, or like the regular pro shows and I'll do it for like, it's still fun, but it's yeah. like fun to come in like 15. Right? Yeah. And that's just like, it, right? You're going in yeah. as an editor. You're like, I'm not here for fun. I want to win. Exactly. And you know what? Amber would actually probably get mad at me listening to this. And I bet he will listen and get mad because, <laughs> you know, he wants me to have the attitude that I'm, I'm going to win regardless. And obviously you go into a show with that attitude, but like, guys, like you're Ishna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like next level. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, well, if people want to follow along, if they want to get in touch with you, anything like that, where do they find you? So you can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Dov underscore IFBB Pro. I think that's what it is. D-O-V, <laughs> Dr. D-O-V underscore IFBB Pro. There you go. All right, people, if you enjoyed this episode with Dr. Dub Natural, repeat that again, Natural <laughs> IFBB Pro, then give us a like. Subscribe for future episodes, give her a follow on Instagram, and we'll see you guys in the next one.